So you clicked on this video, which means you either wonder if ancient structures are older than we currently believe, or you might believe in an ancient advanced civilization, or you want to hear my hypothesis and the plausibility that the ancient stone structures on earth are possibly reconstructions of earlier created monuments by previous cultures. My name is Kaylee and in this video we are going to look into all of this, but I will add in some, you know, science to see if my personal hypothesis that I've had for about two years now could even be possible. So back in March 2020, I started researching ancient stone structures and I did this because I combined my love for architecture and my love for ancient history and I got infatuated with this and I started creating videos on the things that I was researching and that's how this channel came to life. Although there was already someone with the perfect name for my channel, Matt Simpson, looking at you because ancient architects would have been an amazing name for my channel. But I kept being drawn by Gobekli Tepe and the Tastabelar sites in Turkey, among other locations like Kataloyuk and, you know, more as well. And <laughs> these are known as the very oldest man-made stone structures that we have ever uncovered. Although I personally never really created any videos about them. I shifted the focus of my channel a couple times, <laughs> as most of y'all know. And, you know, Matt Simpson from the Ancient Architects channel already covers these location in vivid detail on his channel. So, like, why would I even make videos on it myself when I don't really have much to bring to the table or to add to his research? But way back in the beginning of my channel, I researched the megalithic cemetery of Carrowmore in County Sligo in Ireland. And there was one dolmen which is seen as the oldest stone structure in Europe. And this caught my interest for a very good reason. So a charcoal sample at the dolmen, known as tomb number four on the Carrowmore Megalithic Cemetery, revealed a date of 5,620 BCE, which is more than 7,600 years ago. A second charcoal sample from the same dolmen, again, tomb number four on the megalithic cemetery of Caramore, revealed a date of 4,800 BCE, which is still more than 6,800 years ago. Both these dates are contested by archaeologists, but I think they are quite significant. Significant in ways that could change our perception of the cultures living in these times. So sort of rewriting history sort of significant if what I am theorizing holds up. So these dates did really make me wonder for quite a while, contested or not, could they possibly be real? Could they be true? And I do want to say that I personally really, really believe that radiocarbon dating is correct, but Radiocarbon dating only takes into account the soil underneath the stones of the structures and the bones that are found inside. But these bones could have been placed later in times and these stones could have been placed again later in times. So for those wondering or the people who are unsure, how does radiocarbon dating actually work? So let's go over that very quickly. And to oversimplify it, Radiocarbon dating is a method of dating that gives us an objective age estimate for carbon-based materials that originates from living organisms. So usually they measure the amount of carbon-14 present in a sample and then comparing that to an internationally used reference standard to calculate the date. So why would they measure the carbon-14, you may ask? Well, as time goes by, the carbon-14 decays in a very predictable way. So the researchers use this decay as a sort of clock, and thus they are able to calculate dates for things like wood, food, pollen, dead animals, dead humans, or 
even poop, which is where the sentence don't poop in the forest came from, because in the future, your actual poop may be found and everyone will know that you took a dump in the bushes or in the forest. It, to each their own. If you want to do that, go do that. <laughs> so by using radiocarbon dating alone, we cannot necessarily uncover absolute dates for stone structures from the ancient world, which if you think about it, isn't that strange of a thought. So these structures may actually be thousands of years older and possibly even reconstructed back in ancient times, which is why we are getting the dates from research to be no older than usually 6,000 years from now outside of ancient Turkey. But Kaylee, <laughs> where do you come up with the idea of structures being reconstructions? We dated the soil underneath it, so you know, we know it's that exact age. Yeah, <laughs> right? Well, here's the kicker. <laughs> this is where the hypothesis gets a bit juicy, so to speak. So let's take a look at Newgrange in Ireland probably see the picture right here if I edit quite right. It's a magnificent ancient passage tomb in the Boyne Valley and it was excavated in the 1960s and after the excavations were finished it was completely reconstructed. So imagine this if you will. Just gonna play with me, play along with me. Earth gets hit by a cataclysmic event. We lose our technology, we lose everything that is not made of stone. Everything around you that's not created from actual stone, so not concrete or whatever, it doesn't exist anymore. Humans start to eventually once again create the technology that we sort of, you know, use today, probably slightly different, but you get the gist, right? So they eventually come to the point of creating radiocarbon dating again. And then they discover the ruins of Newgrange because by then it were probably like two, three, four, five, six thousand years in the future. So they find the ruins of Newgrange and they start to excavate and they date the soil underneath the monument. Now, my question to you is, what would this soil sample reveal as a date? Would it reveal the same date that we uncovered in the 1960s? And back then they dated it to have been created around 3200 BCE. Or would it reveal the date of the reconstruction as all the soil was cleared before the passage tomb was rebuilt? So the soil underneath was cleared because then those soil samples would not come up with a date of 3200 BCE. It would actually come up with a date in the 1960s AD, which is a difference of nearly 5200 years. That is a staggering difference. So what if structures in Europe, not all of them, but what if some structures in Europe, like these megalithic tombs, the dolmens, hench monuments, what if they are reconstructions of older monuments? It is possible. It's not a weird idea. We would never be able to fully uncover the older dates with our current dating methods because it's not possible, but I personally find it extremely unlikely that we have a 7,000 year gap in construction with stone between the Tastapeller sites in Turkey and the oldest stone structure in Europe at the Carol Moore Cemetery. And also, if you look at a map of Europe that we have here on the screen, <laughs> and you look at the two locations I just mentioned, the Carol Moore Megalithic Cemetery is like all the way up here while the turkey things are like probably down here somewhere. They couldn't possibly be more further away from each other than what you see on map, which is highly strange in itself as well, as if in between those two locations for 7,000 years, no stone structures were built at all. Make that make sense to me. This is like my biggest question when it comes to the ancient world. We didn't build with stone for about 7,000 years. And when I say reconstructions, they might have not originally been made of stone, actually. They might have been originally made of wood for thousands of years. And when you try and tell me that wood doesn't get as massive as stone, then you clearly haven't seen the ancient woods in the United States of America with these 
absolute gigantic trees, sequoias or something, I think. They might have been mostly cut down now in modern times, but some of them still exist. And I mean, I don't want that tree to fall on me because I'll be dead. Very dead. I'll be like seven meters below ground if that falls on me. It is possible that we had burial mounds, passage tombs, dolmens, hench monuments created from wood and that they kept being rebuilt for a very long time, possibly thousands of years, because, you know, wood decays much faster than stone. And probably a long time ago, they started creating them or reconstructing them from stone, but they might have not really lasted because these people may not have been as skilled as, you know, later on. If you just start to work with something, you're not immediately like an expert. Eventually, about 5,600 years ago, you know, uh, the Neolithic builder culture started to develop and they could have possibly discovered the ruins of these ancient structures. And eventually these stone structures were reconstructed by them because they had the skill and the knowledge for it to last. It is plausible for sure. A lot of people think that the younger Dryas holds quite the significance when it comes to ancient civilizations, ancient structures and cultures. I personally think that we try to blame the younger Dryas a little bit too much for things, but that's my personal opinion. I think people over romanticize the idea of the younger Dryas and the effect that it had on the human population. Many people think that the younger Dryas is to blame for the disappearance of what they believe was an advanced ancient civilization. I do not believe this. Of course, the younger Dryas really had quite the effect on Earth, but not everyone might know exactly what the younger Dryas is. You've heard about it, probably, but that doesn't make you knowledgeable about it. So the Younger Dryas is a 1200 year cold snap that brought the planet back to a mini ice age after the planet had already been warming up for a couple thousand years. There's also an older Dryas, which was a much shorter cold event around 14,000 years ago, and that only lasted approximately 200 years. So during the Younger Dryas, the planet didn't just get cold. It also happens to be the time of one of the largest mass extinctions in recent history. So scientists have been working tirelessly to figure out what caused the Younger Dryas, hoping to figure out if it could possibly happen again, because we have no actual clue at this point. We have some ideas but we don't know exactly what caused it. And so we're afraid that, you know, it might just suddenly happen again. But both the cause of the Younger Dryas and the cause of the extinction of the megafauna are the subjects of quite a heated debate because of the uncertainty. So why is the Younger Dryas called the Younger Dryas? You might ask, at least I wondered, like why this weird name? What's a Dryas? Well, it has to do with a flower. I bet you didn't guess that up front. It is quite the thing. So the dryest flower is a flower that flourishes in cold climates. But during the period of 12,800 till 11,600 years ago, it was found all over the Northern Hemisphere in places that we currently actually perceive to be warm climates. So during both the older and the younger dryest, the areas in the Northern Hemisphere that are currently warm were in a tundra-like state. So as scientists in the 19th and 20th century discovered the driest flowers in the south of England, and for instance in Denmark, and as you can imagine, these driest flowers cannot be found there today as it is way too warm for them to survive there, we know that those areas were incredibly cold for quite a while, because those flowers started to grow there. So scientists in the United Kingdom used fossils of insects and plants to try and estimate the temperature range for the Channel Islands during the driest periods. They discovered that the warmest month during the Younger Dryas was between 9 and 13 degrees Celsius, which are similar temperatures of 
today's winter temperatures in those areas. So all evidence points to a very sudden cold event. And some evidence gives us a sense of what happened. It does not explain how it happened. But trying to figure out the cause has been extremely difficult. So there are countless of hypotheses ranging from oceanic circulation changes to volcanic eruptions and meteorite impacts. It's all possible, but none of them have been pointed to as the actual cause. So let's go over a few, shall we? One hypothesis has to do with the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation which is the flow of the water between the oceans on our planet. And as you can imagine, this is as sort of being in a conveyor belt. So like, so the flow starts near the equator and the warm water moves north and some of it evaporates, making it saltier. As it moves towards the Arctic, it cools down, releasing its heat around Western Europe, where I live. Hi, Western Europe. So these two processes make the water more dense. And this density is what's behind the movement of this sort of conveyor belt, if you will. If this circulating movement would slow down, the northern hemisphere would get a lot colder. Of course, the question here would be, what would cause this natural system to slow down? So there are scientists that believe that the Younger Dryas happened because of a dam made of ice known as the Laurentide Ice Sheet in Arctic Canada suddenly collapsed and released a huge glacial lake known as Lake Agassiz. This glacial water would then end up in the North Atlantic Ocean, but this would have been fresh water instead of salt water, making it a lot less dense than the salty seawater. The density difference could have messed up the entire movement of this sort of conveyor belt of our oceans. The warm water would actually get stuck around the equator and there would be no heat transported to Europe. Experts have found evidence of this meltwater in the form of a specific isotope of oxygen in sediments north of Alaska dating back to 13,000 years around the same time as the start of the Younger Dryas. So this is actually conclusive evidence and a clue that we do know for certain that sudden flow of meltwater that originated in North Alaska made its way into the Atlantic and it was a huge, huge amount of water. So this huge amount of meltwater was probably there already because of the ice sheet on the land was melting due to the climate becoming warmer until approximately 13,000 years ago. Remember, we, the climate was warming up before the start of the Younger Dryas. So this actually does make it possible for this theory to be correct. A warming climate could have melted the ice sheet, eventually the dam would collapse, give way, under the warmth and the weight of the water and releasing this water into the Atlantic and therefore driving the earth into a mini ice age because the conveyor belt of oceanic current systems just halted. To me, this is probably the most plausible theory, but this is not the only theory. There's also a theory that the Lager Sea volcanic eruption brought forth the Younger Dryas, but this doesn't really hold up as there is about 100 or 200 years between the eruption and the onset of the Younger Dryas. Although it could have definitely had a negative impact. Then there are people that believe that an impact from outer space was the onset of the Younger Dryas. Many people will immediately point to the Hiawatha crater in Greenland because oh, that has to be it. And for a long time, they actually thought they were right. Although new research that was published in March of 2022 has revealed the Hiawatha crater was most likely formed some 58 million years ago. That's quite the difference. That's like shortly after the dinosaurs went extinct. So I personally am not really sure on the significance of the Younger Dryas when it comes to all of this. Ancient civilizations, ancient cultures, ancient structures. But I didn't want to mention all of that because a lot of people point to it and give it that significance. 
The Tostapeller sites in Turkey, including Karahan Tepe, Gobekli Tepe and more, have the oldest dates around 11,400 years ago, which means that it was probably built nearly right after the Younger Dryas ended, and not necessarily before. The claims that some people make when they theorize that the Tostapeller sites like Karahan Tepe and Gobekli Tepe were abandoned due to the beginning of the Younger Dryas, therefore, does not make any sense. However, the Tostapeller sites actually do make sense in my proposed timeline as being built after the Younger Dryas Cold Spell. Because after the Younger Dryas Cold Spell on Earth ended, these hunter-gatherers, their communities, probably had a much easier time finding their food. Therefore, they had more time on their hands for the creation of such structures. I also want to make the notion that during this entire video, I've been talking about ancient structures. Not ancient tombs, not ancient temples, because we actually can't be sure on their function. All we know for sure is that the people in ancient times built these structures, and these hinges, and these dolmens, and their reasoning for the creation of said structures might never truly be known. So unless we figure out how to build a time machine, go back in time and, you know, ask them, why are you building this? Is this a temple? Is this a tomb? Are you going to lay someone to rest here? Or are you going to like worship someone? Why are you building this? But unless we figure out how to do that, go back in time and ask them, we just don't know. I need to fix my flux capacitor because I would like to build a time machine. I also want to make it very obvious that the entire video uh, about this hypothesis that I have, this entire idea is very much a work in progress. And it's a theory that I've had sort of stuck in my head for nearly two years now. and. I don't know, I feel like it was time to reveal the base of the idea. I've spoken about it a little bit with the professor and a few historians, and they don't tell me that I'm crazy, so it's very possible. And I would love for my fellow YouTubers, my historians, my experts in the field to look into it and let me know what they think. Could it be possible that a portion of the ancient stone structures in Europe are reconstructions of earlier monuments, either of wood or stone? And I personally think that the answer to that is yes. But you do not have to agree with me. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments down below. But with that said, you have reached the end of this video. And if you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. And click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. I would also like to thank my patrons and my channel members for all your support. It's incredible. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.